Hello everybody and welcome back to the next episode in the series. Thanks for tuning in again and in the last episode we covered creating a second branch here uh, or well we created, covered branching and uh, we ended the video with uh, creating a second branch here pushing that to our remote branch um, that just has or sorry a remote repository that has a little bit of a difference in this soccer tile 2 um, file and so today we're just going to talk about um, uh, pull requests. So, uh, you know, I guess in the GitHub UI here, there's a whole bunch of different tabs and actions up here, and one of them being pull requests. So if you go ahead and click that, you'll actually go ahead and see, um, you know, based upon what this filter is set to, but you'll see uh, basically all the pull requests that are open for the repository. Now, this is just a very, very small, simple uh, project and repository at the moment, so there's not a lot going on. But um, if you're unfamiliar with what pull requests are, it's basically uh, merging in branches, but requiring or communicating that merge with someone else on the team. So if you're doing individual work and whatnot, like it's not all that important, I guess you could say, or, or not all that like um, useful because it's just you reviewing your code and you can do that in the IDE. And maybe you want to just to get practice with it or, um, you know, just get familiar with the process or see your code outside of the emulator or the IDE. But um, it becomes more and more important as you are on a team that starts to grow. So whether that's in school and you're working on a group project or, um, you know, in, in your free time working on a project with other developers or, you know, if you're on a specific Android team and there's more than one of you. Um, so enough talking about it we'll just get to it and uh, discuss things as we go so you can see here uh, this little UI that comes up basically you're going to be merging if you see this arrow into this branch from this branch so right now master into master um, there's no, there's no differences here so there's actually nothing to even create a pull request from but if we select a different branch our second branch it'll kind of load It'll let you know here able to merge, as in there are no merge conflicts. So if the code is uh, reviewed properly and is ready to go, you can actually just merge it in. There will not be any issues from Git. Um, you'll go ahead and get some higher level information here about you know commits, files, changes, comments. We'll get to that in a minute, and then you know the contributor as well. So here you can see my commit a few days ago said that we uh, added the image URL field to this file. Uh, again, you got one file, which is going to be two additions, one deletion. Eh, they kind of have a weird way to, um, Git has a weird way of, of explaining what the changes are. So this really converts to like there was really just one file, one, one line modified and one file added. But you can see here uh, what they're trying to communicate. And then um, something to note here, I actually like the split view more. The unified view makes this look a little bit more... Um, I don't know, I guess difficult to see at first glance. There's just more you need to understand about like where the file was before and where it is now. Um, but if you go ahead and just click the split view, it'll actually split every file that's a part of the code review or the pull request. And then you'll see on the left here what the original version is. And you'll see on the right what the, um, the modified and like final version is that you're going to be merging into it. So it's a little bit easier here to see that the difference was that there was no field here and you added a comma and this additional uh, line. So I don't know, I like the split better. Unified it's every now and then has a better use case, but uh, split just makes life easier. So um, if you could imagine this, if you could imagine being a developer or um, uh, the developer opening this pull request or you reviewing somebody's code, uh, they'll go ahead and click this create pull request. They'll go ahead and give you the um, section to put a title in. So you'll see title and then a comment. And this is relatively important. Again, it just kind of goes more towards like best practices for software development in general. You kind of want to be able to, um, uh, you know, like provide the description without having people, uh, without needing to dive through, you know, every little line of code that was changed to understand what was going on. Um, you know, in this case, I'm actually going to just leave this as the title, but obviously if there were more 
more files modified or a new feature that was built out or, or a bug that was fixed, you could kind of explain shortly the, um, uh, the title to, to kind of the overarching theme and then you can go in here and uh, you know just say some more stuff that helps describe the issue. Um, you know you could do a whole bunch of formatting in here uh, to you know I guess further your uh, like make your point and stuff like that so you can eventually get into you know a whole lot of um, that'll come up bold but you, you know a whole lot of like information that you can give in there and and I guess you know just kind of figure out either what works best for you on your team or you know you might be given a certain set of guidelines that you need to abide by yeah, if you're joining a team. Uh, you can assign things here if you're in a repository with a bunch of different people you would be able to request certain people to review them and they'll get like an email notification um, the assignee kind of the same idea labels you can put on you know if you wanted to help say like oh this is a bug or yeah here we go an enhancement um, little thing and then if it was a part of a project that would exist in this little t um, uh, tab here you can uh, kind of add that in same thing with milestones um, I forget where they are but you can kind of define these milestones and just little tags and things to to like group things and connect things within the repository to one another and then you get one last look at all the different changes and stuff like that so um, then when you're done you can just go ahead and create the pull request and now this will actually go ahead and open the pull request so as you can see here if we look at this this tab again you'll see the uh, title any of the labels that are associated with it and then who it was opened by and then you'd see like an assignee or who's a tag to if you had that so then you can go ahead and click on one um, so now let's say that you know your coworker or your uh, colleague open this pull request and you're supposed to review it um, you can click on the pull request you'll end up with this um, this view here that kind of just overlays or outlines everything that you know they've they've provided to you so far you'll see the changes you get an idea of how big the pull request is any of the labels projects milestones all that stuff um, you can go ahead and leave a comment here there would be a description here if it was added in the section when they were creating the pull request a number associated with the pull request um, so that you can kind of just track it and, and I guess share share direct links to your um, colleagues to it uh, and then within there you can kind of see a little bit difference in the commit um, tab you'll see all the work that they had done you'll see as they commit you can check the specific the specifics of that commit uh, but really when it comes down to uh, checking the overall changes from the code you're going to end up looking in this files change tab um, and then it will list all of the files here that are changed or have been modified again you can uh, yeah you can change your unified or split um, and and you know look at it that way um, and then I guess a recent thing they added was actually kind of nice is you know say there were 10 files in this once you view it and you look at it and say yes this makes sense this is bug free this fixes the bug whatever you can actually click like the little view check mark and then if you return to the pull request I guess let's do it if we return to it uh, all right, so maybe not if you go all the way back, but if you end up viewing it and go to like the conversation and then coming back, never mind. I guess that really is only applicable when you go through um, each individual file. So it kind of just helps collapse things and let you know that yes, you viewed it, or maybe you want to come back to one so you don't check it off or something like that. Um, but anyway, once you have uh, determined that yeah you know we're good to go this all this all looks good you can um, click this little drop down the review changes and then you can actually write a comment um, so everything looks good um, you can either add this as a comment you can uh, approve 
ah, I can't approve it because So I could probably merge the pull request, but I can't because of the settings in the repository. I can't approve um, or request changes at this moment of uh, on this PR because I was the one who created it. So a little annoying trying to figure this out with just you know the same person um, creating it and reviewing it. But uh, a couple checks in there, I guess, you know, a couple settings to keep it honest so that, you know, other people need to review the code kind of thing. Um, but at the very least, I can leave a comment, that's for sure. We can submit the review. You'll see that this comment was um, added to basically like the history of this uh, pull request. On the notion of comments, you can actually inline comment. So, uh, you know, you can either click on a particular line and put in a, a, a comment or if you were to you know click and drag you can actually comment around the whole thing and say um, you know whatever like maybe oh this was clever or this makes sense or questioning hey wh what's going on here or something like that um, and then you can add your comment there and if you were to go back to the conversation you can actually see that there was a comment here and then like what I had selected as well. So you can kind of call things out specifically that you liked or didn't like or have questions on or something like that. And there'll be this entire history here that you'll see um, if then changes were required, you could, um, you know, see someone, you know, down here, kind of uh, another little line like this that'll say, you know, I don't know, whatever the commit message is and then the commit itself underneath this one. And you'll um, you'll you'll literally get the entire history of this branch here from the uh, from the pull request. So it's it's pretty convenient. It's a little difficult to maybe explain now in such a simple example. Um, but you know if you if you take a stab at it, or if there's maybe you know a, a legitimate PR where there's someone reviewing someone else's code, you know it'll make more sense. Um, and then when you're ready to go, you can just merge. It'll give you this like double, are you sure kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> and so then here, even this action of merging it uh, is tracked on this pull request. So you'll now see a little blurb that says that. And then when you do um, merge things in and it detects that it can be safe, the branch that you were working in can be deleted safely, you can actually just click this here. It will delete the branch. Uh, at remote, so you'll still have that branch obviously in your local um, IDE, but if we were to go back to our code, um, we only have one branch here. We no longer have that second second branch or whatever it was called, uh, but we still have it here, obviously. So um, at this point, we've kind of done things slightly in reverse, where previously we were always modifying things in master and pushing them to remote. And this is the case where now remote is ahead of our local master. I believe as long as we didn't. Yes, okay. So you can see here that we're back on master in our, in our IDE and we don't have this uh, image URL field that was here. So a good thing real quick to just, a good practice to be in is once it's been merged in and you got the okay, you can go ahead and delete your branch. Um, it actually prompts you to delete the tracked branch because this git here, this IDE, has not been updated to understand that um, the branch has been deleted at remote. So I'm actually going to restore that real quick just to show you uh, what's going to happen. But instead of this green check mark here or the commit, we're going to actually update the project or um, I believe under the hood it would be the pull command that it's running. So you can go ahead and click this. We'll click the merge changes into the current branch uh, option. You could do don't show again if you want, but no big deal. So we'll go ahead and click that. It says one file updated and now our image URL field is here. So now we have pulled down the changes from master into our local master and now everything's um, up to date across the board. Also, if we go ahead and delete the second branch from our remote, or, or sorry, from our local, there is no option now to say delete uh, remote branch. And that's because in the process of pulling and updating the project, 
it not only pulls the code changes, but it'll also pull you know, some other metadata associated with it. And part of that is the description of the specific uh, branches. So previously our remote thought, hey, we, we, um, it didn't know that we you know, did something to this file and nor did it know that the second branch was already deleted at the uh, remote repository. But once we pulled, updated the project, got all that information, we get the code changes, we get the information that says, yeah, this branch no longer exists. So when we delete it locally, it's, Git, doesn't, Git doesn't see it at the remote location anymore. So it's, um, it's completely out of sight, out of mind. And so that's, uh, that's, that's about it. You know, it's a primitive um, introduction to pull requests, but the idea of opening them from a different branch, merging them into master. Um, and obviously if you had a different branch than master, you know, you had four or five branches, you could merge one branch into the other in a pull request. You don't always have to put the um, pull request into master. You can change this branch that it's going to get merged into, and you can change this branch that's going to be doing the merging into this branch here. So you can kind of, you know, play with it however you see fit, whatever makes the most sense. Um, in your branch management, um, you know, I guess, uh, of your project. But, um, you know, very easy to create them, open them. It's a good idea to give a good title, give a good description. And then when you're here, uh, back in your code, you know, you get wind that, hey, that PR was merged in. Okay, great. Um, let me go ahead and update my project. You update your project, everything merges in. Then you get like the fresh and the, um, you know, the, the up-to-date master. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's about it. That, that, that's merging or pull request in a nutshell. Uh, I think we'll cover a few other Git related topics in the future, uh, or sorry, in the next episode, but, um, that'll do it for this one. So I, uh, hope to see you in the next one. Thanks.